Well, clearly, I think 5G is going from hype to reality. Uh, we would be able to see a whole bunch of applications around 5G. We're going to see um, 5G uh, in a way taking off. It has been launched, as we know, in several countries. Uh, 46 operators have launched it to date in 24 different countries and is growing. China, South Korea and the US is, is pioneering it. Uh, obviously, first we're going to see enhanced mobile broadband, so it's going to be faster speed, lower latency. But the real interesting stuff is going to come in a couple of years when we see that the enterprise uh, segment will really be affected or be empowered the most. 5G got politicized somewhere along the way with the fight over Huawei. And what we had uh, in the news leading up to the Mobile World Congress was that uh, the Attorney General in the state suggested that maybe it would be worthwhile for the US government to buy stakes in Nokia and Ericsson, also sort of casting the assertion that maybe there's something wrong with these companies not running at optimal ability. I think some shareholders may have felt that was the case around Nokia, and we've seen the CEO change, uh, the announcements come out. Mm. What do you make of the pressure now on these two particular companies when it comes to supply chain and building up 5G? Well, well, of course, supply chain is being affected of the coronavirus. That, that, that's no doubt. And Rajiv Suri is stepping down after 10 years. I don't think has anything to do with anything else that he has been there for 10 years and he's done a fantastic job. So I, I, I don't think that one should read too much into the conspiracy theories. Uh, they're two very well run companies uh, and it is a cutthroat competition out there. And if you're not super skilled, you won't make it for sure. Nice. Great quote from you just now that it's, uh, that it's moving from hype to reality on 5G. The problem with that reality is it's not great for everyone. And, the, and what I notice with some of the commentary that Karen's been relaying to us from the industry is that the costs of setting up 5G have been enormous. Then there's going to be this bountiful phase, hopefully, for many companies. But then there'll be the commoditization phase. So the window to make a lot of money for some companies out of 5G is going to be quite small, isn't it? They're not all going to be... Uh, benefiting like the Netflixes of this world. Well, I'm I'm not sure that you're right. I think you're okay. still. I, I well, think you're still in the hype. about this one when it, when 3G and 4G went that way? I think you're still in the hype mode. Remember <laughs> that in in 2025 there will be roughly 1.8 billion 5G subscribers. 20% of the world's population will be on 5G, mm. just overtaking 3G. And it's so really so my, my point is that it's taking a long time. It takes a long time. No. So don't. I, I'm not anti. I'm, fat, I'm nah. fully on board, and I have yeah. been for about. It took Karen a couple of years to get me on board. I, I'm excited about what it will <laughs> mean really. for my world. Yeah. I'm not excited what it means for telecom uh, valuations. For because you, I think the telecom players are suffering all the costs, but not a lot of the benefits. Now that is so true. Now I think what what you will see as a consumer is obviously faster download speeds. And I mean, I'm on 5G today, and I can download my Netflix movie in maybe four seconds. Other movies are available. We have a great one called Peacock, by the way, our own uh, streaming device. Oh, there as you were. There, I <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, so that takes you takes me now four or five seconds instead of 45 seconds. Well, that's not going to make a, a huge game changer, but low latency applications will be around. Everything that will benefit from being connected will be connected, and 5G has that capability. We can connect more than a million devices in per square kilometers through 5G. So for you as a consumer, you will see a much more connected society, a much more intelligent society. Much more and cyber risk. And much, much more, more hacking absolutely, risk. Much more cyber risk will be there. So we need to work those issues as well. Much more right? privacy issues. All of that. All of the above. But however, if we don't debate those uh, questions, we won't be, be in the right place. Yeah. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.